Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm going to lower the Beetle. Alright guys, so I have here a 1971 Super Beetle, and with the Super Beetles, like I explained in the previous episode, as opposed to the earlier Beetles, um, this actually has springs in the front as opposed to torsion bars. And even looking at it here, you can see that the front sits a lot higher than the back, and that seems to be a Super Beetle problem from what I've researched. They all pretty much do that. It's, uh, I don't know why they set them up that way, but that seems to be the way that they sit. And um, that means uh, I want to make it look a little bit better. I don't want it slammed out completely on the ground so it's scraping everywhere. I want it so it just looks a bit better, but um, I can still drive it. So um, I'm looking at probably about a two and a half inch drop at the front is what I'm planning on doing. So um, let's get into it. So taking this rule off was a lot harder than it should have been. I think uh, it might have been King Kong or someone who actually uh, put one of these uh, wheel lugs on, but uh, I managed to get it off. So the next step is to try and get these uh, struts out of the car. And the first step to get the struts out is to undo these bolts here around the, uh, the top of the strut towers on both sides. So next we just have to remove this brake line from the side of the strut tower and then undo these bolts around the base of the, uh, the strut and it should all just come out. Okay, so on the left-hand side of the car, you can see that there's this cable that comes through uh, the center of the hub, and that's the speedo cable. So that needs to be removed because it actually passes through uh, a hole on the strut. So that needs to be removed so we can get it all off. That was a mission, but you can see here, I chucked uh, one bolt in just loosely back in to hold the, uh, the whole assembly in place because you don't want this just dangling on the, uh, the brake lines and stuff. So that's in place now. Now we need to uh, start attacking these struts. While I'm here, I'll mention that on the regular Beetles, you can actually uh, just replace the spindle, which actually is what the whole wheel rotates on. You can get drop spindles, which sit in sort of, which, which is what this is here. This is a spindle, but it raises the spindle up higher so that you just swap the part out and uh, you instantly get a two and a half inch drop. And they're relatively cheap and uh, easy to get. But with these, you can see the spindle is already much higher than the base. The other one, the, uh, the, the regular spindle sort of sits about here and they raise it up. And that, of course, lowers the car in this case, there aren't uh, simple drop spindles available, so um, that's why we're attacking these struts. All right, this is the third time I'm actually saying this because I've filmed it twice and both times I didn't have the microphone on properly, so you guys wouldn't have heard anything. This time I can see the microphone's on. Okay, <laughs> the next step is to get these springs off of these struts. And to do that, you just need to undo the, uh, the bolt on the top. The issue is, is that the springs are under tension. So if I just undo that, this thing can come off and smash me in the face and it's dangerous and don't do it. Um, that's why you need some spring compressors, which actually compress the spring, put on the tension, take the uh, pressure off the top, and you can get the top off. Now, 
uh, that brings me to another way that uh, some people, not just with beetles, with any car with springs, uh, people lower it, they can cut uh, the springs and cut out a couple of coils. That will lower your car, but don't do it. Like I mentioned, this is under uh, tension. Uh, that means that the spring is captive. The trouble is, is when you cut a couple of coils out, usually what happens is that the spring is no longer under tension and there is, uh, it's, it's loose inside the, the mounting. And that means that it can actually potentially jump out of the, um, uh, its base. And uh, I had a friend's car years ago who was cut springs and it jumped out of the base and then the spring touched the tire and the tire unwound the spring all the way down the, uh, the tower and bound the whole thing up and it was a nightmare. So don't do it. Um, all right, so let's get into it and uh, let's get some springs off. All right, now we have springs off, bare towers here. Now, uh, the next thing is to unscrew this top. There's a couple of notches in the top here and you can just knock it around and unscrew this top cap and take the shocks out. So that's the next thing to do. All right, so now I've got these off and I've just cleaned them up with a bit of brake cleaner. Now it's getting time to uh, work out how to lower these things. Now, I have seen methods where you can, you can cut a piece out of this tube and then uh, weld it back together so that it's shorter, but then you can, you can also then potentially weld that other piece back on top and it's messy. And um, what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna try and cut the weld off around the base of this spring perch and just slide the spring perch down further and then re-weld it on lower. So for starters, I'm gonna mark a, a line down the edge of the tube that gives me a reference point so that I can mount this uh, spring perch back in the same way around so it's not twisted. I wanna make sure everything's still square and straight. So I'll mark that down the, uh, the side. And then I wanna also mount, work out how low I want to mount it down. Now I wanna go down about two and a half inches or around 65 millimeters. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the base of the perch, uh, where there's a flat area here, down to the bottom uh, flat area here. The, where it actually joins on is not gonna be an accurate place to mark it because I'm gonna be cutting away some of that metal to re-weld it on. So it could lose a bit of space either side. So do my measurements and then work out what the total measurement is and then what the measurement I want minus 65 mil so I can slide it down and um, so let's start marking. Instead of having to score a line down the side of the shaft, I realized that um, on the base of this, there is actually an, uh, a triangle that's offset and this lug is actually slightly larger, but I put a, a cross against that lug and the hole in that lug actually lines up with this hole back here. So I know I've just put a cross there and a cross there, so I know I need to line these two holes up again when I slide it down and weld it back together again. So line them up and we should be good. So my next job is to try and cut this off. Now my plan is to cut along the top edge of this weld the whole way around and till I can get this uh, seat loose and then I can slide this up out of the way and grind off the excess. That's my plan anyway. So um, I just need to get my measurement and then start cutting. Well, that is quite interesting. I'm just doing my measurements and it looks like the, uh, they're not actually the same height anyway. The, um, the driver's side is already about 10 mil lower than the passenger side. So um, I'm just going to cut them and weld them the same. The total length of the tubes are the same, but this mount is 10 mil lower on the driver's side already, whereas the, uh, the passenger side is not. But looking at the welds, it actually looks like the, uh, the passenger side has been possibly cut and welded before, whereas the driver's side hasn't. The driver's side is also slightly different to the passenger side because this one has like uh, little flat mounts. You can see the base of this is quite flat, whereas this one is quite curved. 
all the way around. So uh, who knows? Either way, I'm gonna try and even it all up now. So I managed to um, cut the uh, the spring plate loose and made it. I've cleaned it all up with the uh, flat disc on the grinder just to get it all nice and tidy. I did uh, gouge around this uh, tube a bit more than what I would have liked, but uh, it's still it's still not too bad. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the other one and make sure I didn't uh, wreck it. Oh, another little tip is um, when you're doing this, put the cap back on because. Uh, this, uh, these threads are quite easy to damage. If you knock it off a bench or something, you can damage it and it'll be a real pain to put this back on again. So, all right, so now I'm gonna tackle the next one. here I've lined everything up I've used a pair of vice grips on here to hold a nice straight base so that I can get this nice and square get this cut nice and square because it wiggles around so I've spent a bit of time lining it all up getting it so that I can hold this against this base I've got all my marks lined up so now it's time to just tack it in and uh, make sure it's all where I want it and then I can weld it up Okay, and we're done. Both are welded up. Now, they're not the most beautiful welds in the world, but uh, I'm confident enough that there's plenty of penetration there. Um, yeah, I said not super pretty, but definitely penetrating. There's no way this is going anywhere. I'm happy with that, so I'm just gonna let this cool down a little bit, and then I'm gonna give it a hit with some, um, some primer and some black, uh, rust-proof primer and, and stuff so that it doesn't uh, rust anymore and then we'll start bolting back in the car and see how it looks. All right, they're looking nice and neat and tidy, so now it's just a matter of doing everything back reverse of what I uh, did to pull them out and put them all back in again. It's all bolted back together again. There's no nuts or bolts or clips left over, which is a good sign, I think. Um, so I think everything's gone back on there again. Now is the moment of truth. Let's uh, lower it down and actually see how it went. That looks so much better. It's actually sitting quite flat. I've got to take it for a drive now and just uh, see how it settles, but um, at the moment, it's actually matching the rear. I don't actually look like, it doesn't actually look like I need to lower the rear because um, it's reasonably even. I can if I want to, you can adjust the torsion bars, but um, I don't want it scraping. I just want it looking a bit better and uh, that's definitely looking better. So uh, let's take it for a spin and see how it goes.
Let's see it'll start first. That was fantastic. It uh, drives great, it rides nice and smooth. Um, some people talk about the fact that when you lower it like this, sometimes um, because the sway bar is actually um, what adjusts the caster on the car, the caster still seemed fine, it still pulled back to center enough. I didn't find that it was a real issue, that it was just sort of floaty and would just go everywhere. So um, I'm happy enough with it as it is. So um, that is how you lower a Super Beetle. I am stoked, that is great. So uh, I suppose that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, during World War II, Volkswagen changed production to military vehicles. The most common was the Type 82, the Kuvelwagen, or bucket car. In 1938, Ferdinand Porsche was asked to design an inexpensive, lightweight vehicle that could be operated reliably on and off the road. Porsche had the prototype ready in a month. After testing, a few modifications were requested. These included lowering the speed, the minimum speed from eight kilometers an hour to four kilometers an hour to match a marching soldier. And they also requested better off-road capability. Porsche solved both of these issues by adding new axles with gear reduction hubs, giving the car more torque and ground clearance all at once. They also added a limited slip differential. They also made a four-wheel drive prototype, but it had no discernible benefit over the original and it was never implemented. <laughs> that was worse than you. That was oh, a long day. It was a long day. You look nice and clean and I'm filthy. But uh, yes, I managed to lower the car and it looks so much better. Great. It's such a great modification. I am really happy with how it turned out. Um, so uh, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff. And uh, if you'd like to help the store out, uh, head down to the link in the description and you can buy some shirts, hoodies or coffee mugs. All right, guys. And